Good morning and welcome to DFW Close Up. I'm Vanessa Brown. Coming up on the show, it's freezing outside and your pets need help fighting the elements. We've got tips to keep them safe. Plus, what's better than a piping hot bowl of soup on a chilly day? Well, helping the stew pot, of course, and the latest on breast cancer screenings, the controversy and the technology that could save your life. That's all coming up next on DFW Close Up as we put our community first. Well, there's another guideline switch for mammograms to tell you about. Recommendations from the American College of Radiology and the Society of Breast Imaging say mammograms should begin at the age of 40 and 30 for high-risk women. It contradicts controversial guidelines from a U.S. advisory panel last year, which said women could wait till 50. Breast cancer is the leading cause of death for American women aged 35 to 50. This year, it's estimated 11,000 women under 40 40 will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Women who don't get mammograms because they think they're too young. So what are you supposed to do if you're in that 25 to 40 age range? Well, Dr. Katherine White is here to fill us in. She's board certified and a fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. White. I understand you have a new kind of technology at your office. What's that called? It's called the HALO, and it's a device that helps us screen women at a younger age, as you mentioned into the 25 to 40 year old women particularly um, for breast cancer risk assessment. Um, the HALO helps us identify those patients who might be at risk to develop breast cancer um, in a non-hereditary fashion. And this is something that's only in a couple of doctor's offices across North Texas. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of you know, an up-and-coming technology? We could see more of it in the future? Yes, I hope that we will. It, it is pretty cutting-edge technology. We've had it for about a year now. Mm -hmm. So you actually brought an example yes, of it. The halo here with you. So it's kind of an interesting looking contraption. How mm -hmm. does it work? Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's similar to a breast pump. It has the two cups here that fit over the breast. Um, they need, create a little bit of suction, um, some kneading, and a little bit of massage. And that helps to try to elicit some fluid from the ductal system of the breast, and that's known as nipple aspirate fluid. So people like myself that, you know, maybe under 40 haven't gone in for a mammogram yet, so they don't really know how the process works, mm -hmm. who should go and get this test? Well, it's actually recommended just routinely for all women that are 25 and older. Um, it is less reliable after the age of 55 because not as many women will produce nipple aspirate fluid, but it's ideal for those younger patients that you mentioned who aren't getting mammograms. So that's really who it's, it's most useful for is in that 25 to 50 age range. So what's really the difference if people haven't had a mammogram before mm -hmm. and they don't quite know what goes on mm -hmm. with the mammogram. What's the difference between a mammogram and this technology? Mm -hmm. um, well, as I mentioned, this is more similar to a breast pump. Um, a lot of patients tolerate this very well. It takes about five minutes, so it's very quick. Um, it's not invasive. There's no needles involved with this technology. Um, and while it is a little bit uncomfortable, most patients can tolerate it pretty well. Mm -hmm. So why would you say it's important for those that are under 40 to get this? Well, it, again, it can help us identify those patients who aren't getting mammograms yet but might be at risk. Um, you know, as you mentioned, the leading cause of breast, breast cancer death is um, in the ages of 35 to 50. And so a lot of those women have never had a mammogram. Um, they may not be getting them regularly. And so this helps us pick up hopefully 6 to 10 years in advance if they have a problem going on. So rather than waiting until they actually develop a cancer to do something about it, we can be a lot more proactive and try to be preventative in breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And you look at those statistics, they really are startling. And at the same time, some women might be confused because in the past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. months, we've heard all of this debate about, you know, oh, you don't need a mammogram until you're actually, you know, older than 40. And, and some women mm -hmm. are just left wondering, what? What should you do? Right. Some people are saying, you know, it's helpful. Others are saying you can put it off. Right. Well, the, the uh, U.S. Preventative Task Force was the one that came out with the recommendations of saying waiting until the age of 50 and also to only have them every other year. But the American Cancer Society, American College of OBGYN, um, American College of Radiology, um, we all feel very strongly that mammography does save lives and is important and should begin no later than age 40.
Mm -hmm. And so this is something that's also important for um, for those that are higher risk. So if you know that maybe you have a history of breast cancer mm -hmm. in your family, would you suggest coming in to do this more often or at a certain age? Well, I mean, you would use this in the same fashion. Again, I would start at age 25, year, regardless of whether you had that breast cancer you know, history or not in your family. But certainly for a lot of patients who do have that risk in their family, they're uh, a little more anxious. So this is another way of reassuring them ahead of time that you know nothing seems to be developing earlier that we can worry about. Um, but again, it's, it's good for all patients because eight out of nine women who get breast cancer don't have a family history. So we have no way of really identifying who those patients are until this technology. So how can people get this? Well, um, there's a, the website for Neomatrix has um, in, in your state or, you know, in your city, um, which doctors have that location. Um, and so, you know, there are several doctors actually in North Texas that offer this technology. And so basically you would just call the office, make an appointment and, you know, talk to the physician about Halo. Mm -hmm. Is this something that people can afford? Does insurance cover it? Yeah, insurance right now does not cover this test, but the test is not outrageously expensive, so most women can afford this. Average cost would be somewhere between $75 and $100 for the exam. Um, the, if women do produce fluid, and about 40% of women will, that fluid is sent to the lab, similar to how a pap smear result is sent to the lab. And typically those lab fees are covered by insurance, so generally the only out-of-pocket cost is for the procedure itself. Okay. Well, it's good to shed some light on this technology, mm -hmm. at least let women know that there is an option out there if they want an early screening. So tell us the website real mm -hmm. quick. www.neomatrix.com. All right, Dr. Okay. White, thank you so much uh -huh. for being here. Thank you very much. Well, still ahead on DFW Close Up, how soup is helping North Texas homeless take charge of their life one bowl at a time, coming up next. Are you ready to